would like to welcome you all here this morning. And in the beginning of the service here, I would like to just make an announcement that we will have our business meeting here tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. We'll begin the service today. We'll sing number 199, Did You Think to Pray, number 199. <laughs> Just thinking about the song as we were singing it there. When we get up in the first thing that we do in the morning, is that on our mind? Are we ready before anything else? Are we ready to go and talk to our Lord and Savior? 
before you left your room, did you think to pray? Was he on your mind immediately of how can I get closer to him and how can I communicate with him today so that I can walk close to him? But in that third verse there, or third stanza, he says, when your heart was filled with anger, did you think to pray? When something comes upon us in our life that we feel like that we have been done so bad and that we have, have that anger swelling up within us, do you think to pray? He is the answer. He has the power to give to you to overcome that anger. He says, did you plead for grace, my brother, that you might give another, that you might forgive another who had crossed your way? Did you think to pray? And that's not just as we go get up in the morning, but it's throughout the day in everything when the temptations and trials come upon us. Do we think to just take it to the Lord instead of trying to overcome it ourselves, which we don't have power to overcome it ourselves? And that's where we can find ourselves being led off or we can find ourselves in temptations that we shouldn't be. But if we'll just remember to pray to take our condition to Jesus Christ. He can overcome. And he will overcome. He has overcome. And we will see victory by believing in Jesus Christ. This morning as we start and as we're talking about, I want us to each and every one Put our attention to the words that we have here today. Let's get out of our mind what we're going to be doing next week, where we're going to be going, where we're going to be working, what all is about to happen. And let's get in our mind right now is what can I do to hear, how can I hear the message today better? And how can when I leave here today come away stronger spiritually than I was when I come. We've talked about this before, but if we were hungry and we were wanting to go get something to eat and we'd go to a very good restaurant and something that, where they had very good food, we would want to be prepared for that. We would want to go there with an appetite so that we could get that food and, and let it nourish our body. And I hope that that's why you've come out here today with an appetite for spiritual food. And I know that the Lord gives that to us. It's right here in His Word. And I know that He has done this over and over and over over the years. He has given us. Every week we get a message that is good, that is food for our soul. Now will we use it properly? Let us this morning, let's turn over to 1 Corinthians. <clears throat> I want to read some this morning in 1 Corinthians. And we'll start at the 15th chapter. Maybe other places we may read. This is a fairly long chapter and there is a lot in it. But let's hear and let's Listen to what his words were in that day, what Paul was telling these people as he had gone through and this was getting right close to the end of this letter that he had written to them. But he had, he had given them a lot of exhortation throughout this letter, a lot of warnings, a lot of rebukes. But then in this word here, he's wanting them to understand about the resurrection to understand what is before the righteous and what God has done. Let's start at the first verse, the 15th chapter 
of 1 Corinthians. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand. Now, can that be with each and every one of us here this morning? I want you to, everyone, let's apply this and see if that salutation or that, those words of encouragement there fits to you and to me. Brethren, first of all, that's what he says. Moreover, brethren, people that had received that new spirit and was walking with him, he says, I declare unto you, I tell you, I give it to you, I have talked to you, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the words of Jesus, which I preached unto you when I was there present with you. He says, I have preached that, I have taught that, which also you have received. Now I know his word has been preached and taught here. Have you received it? That is the question with each and every one of us. Have we truly received it? And are we standing upon his promises now, just as he says, he says, which you have received and wherein ye stand? Are we standing on his promises today? Are we standing on the gospel of Jesus Christ? Are you full of faith and trust in Jesus Christ today? And you're willing to just put it all into his hands. He says, by which also you are saved. By hearing the gospel, by receiving the gospel, and by standing upon that gospel. Being full of truth and full of the spirit of the Holy Ghost. Standing upon it. Which also you are saved. If. You keep in memory what I preached unto you. He says, now, you're saved. You've received these things, and you will continue to be that. If you keep in memory, if you stay under this body, bring it under the subjection to the Spirit by using the power of God. That's what he's talking about. Which I preached unto you unless you have believed in vain. I don't ever want that to be a part of me as going back into the house that I came out of. Believing in something and then going back. He says, unless you have believed in vain. Why would we any want to do this? He says, by which also you're saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you. And he says, if you don't do these things, he says, unless you have believed in vain, if you don't keep that in mind, if you don't walk with him, he says, your belief would be in vain. When we say that we believe in him and we do all, then we are ready to be obedient to him in every situation and hear his word and follow his word. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the Scripture. Do you believe that he was the Son of God? Do you believe that he came here to the earth and he died? And this is what Paul had said. He says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. Paul received that. He received the knowledge and understanding. He received the Spirit down at Damascus after he had been smitten down on the road. He went on down there and he received that Spirit and he received spiritual wisdom and knowledge at that time to be able to preach and to teach the Word of Jesus Christ and to share it with others. And he says, I delivered unto you he gave it to them. He helped them to understand of all that which I also received. He didn't hold anything back. When God told him something to do or Jesus, he was, he was ready to fulfill it. Wherever he sent him, and you can read through the word many, many places he talks about how that God showed him or an angel or a dream or something showed him things that he should be doing in that day and leading him from one city, one town, one country unto the other 
to preach and to teach the word of Jesus Christ and how that he died for our sins. Now, do we all understand that today? He died for our sins according to the Scriptures. Now, according to the Scriptures, and we may read some more about these kind of things, He died for our sins. To take them away, all of our sins behind us, but when we receive that new birth, He is still there and He is willing to re- to. Forgive us our sins if we will repent of them. But we can, as we've read recently, we can't just go on and say, I'm going to sin and my sins are covered. That won't happen. And that he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And just remember what he's saying here. All of these things are just according to the Scriptures, according to the things that people had written in that day about the life of Jesus Christ and what He had done for us. Do we all understand that? That He listened to what He said, that He came here and He lived here upon the earth. He overcame sin in every situation. He died on that cross. He was risen out of the tomb victorious. And he was seen of others many days. He was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present. But some are fallen asleep. And let's don't let that be falling asleep outside of the truth. Falling asleep that way. Let it be that we have fallen asleep in Jesus Christ. We have died in in the works with Jesus Christ. Let that be what we are looking for and what we want to be a part of. But he had told them. He was just warning them. He was showing them. I've told you this. There is many, many people that was witnesses, eyewitnesses of this. There's none here today that's an eyewitness of that. But we can all witness it spiritually. And I know that there are people here that have witnessed this spiritually. After that, he was seen of James and of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. Paul was not there around him when Jesus was here. He was living upon the earth approximately the same time, and he may have seen him. I don't know, but there's nothing recorded that shows that he was around Jesus while he was here upon the earth. But he says that he was an apostle that was born out of due time because he was called up into the third heaven and I believe he did see Jesus Christ. I believe that that point he saw, he said he saw things that was unspeakable, it was unlawful for men to see. He saw him and I believe that he, I know he understood it was Jesus that was speaking to him on the road down to Damascus. He told him, it is Jesus, it is me, why do you kick against the pricks? Why would we go against his word today? His word is simple, pure, and the truth. Why will we not just accept it as that and then follow it? But look at here what he says. He says, for I am the least among the apostles. Even though all of these things he had seen, and he had the power of God, and he knew he had been able to perform miracles, he had done wonderful works. But he says, I am the least of the apostles. That I am meek to be called an apostle. He says, am I even worthy to be called that? Because I persecuted the church of God. Paul, he was not ashamed of what God had done in him. He was not ashamed of the spirit being strong within him. But I believe that that was something that that Paul regretted all the way along, that he persecuted the church of God. He persecuted the people that were worshiping Jesus Christ in that day. 
but did he harm the ones that were truly walking with Jesus? All he did, if they were put to death, was just help them to go right on into eternal life sooner. And they are there, there, and they were rejoicing when Paul was able to see the truth. They rejoiced in that instead of holding something against him. They were rejoicing in that. And I want to rejoice in his word today. Re rejoice in the grace. But by the grace of God, now this is what is for each and every one of us. By the grace of God, I am what I am. And that's what, he, what every one of us need to understand. That if there's anything, Paul, look at all that he had done. The miracles, the preaching, the knowledge that he had spiritually. Healing people. One that was dead, he fell upon him and he came back to life. All of these things he did, but what does he say? He says, but by the grace of God I am what I am. He took no, nothing of that of his own self. But it was Jesus Christ and God the Father that was doing it in him. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than them all. Listen. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. And that's where I want us to all to understand. It can get, things can get, Tangled up and people can look upon it and they can try to say, well, you're talking about works and all this. But Paul, look, let's go back and just read some of the things there that starting at that ninth verse there again. Listen, he says, for I am the least of the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am by the power of God. Nothing to do with him, but by the power of God, I am what I am. And his grace, his power, was bestowed upon me, that was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. The power of God that was given to him, he said, it did not come upon me in vain. But I was able to use that and to grow spiritually, and to help others to be able to grow spiritually. He says, but I labored more abundantly than them all. He labored. He knew there was a job for him to do, but he knew that God was there, and the grace of God, the power of God, was there to do the work within him, but I labored more abundantly than them all. Yet not I. And then he goes on and he wants you to understand it was not him that was laboring. But the grace of God which was with me. He was just being subject to the Spirit of God. And that's what we each and every one of us need to be today. Is be subject to that Spirit. Knowing Look at who he was and look what he did. But he knew and understood that I am nothing. And that's what every one of us need to understand today. But it was the grace of God which was with me. And I know he can be with each and every one of us today. And I know he is there with that reached out hand. And he will give it. He will lift you up. Everyone, whoever you might be. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believed. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? Now we all understand and know that there has been a resurrection, that Jesus Christ died. He was put in the tomb. He was resurrected back. Do you believe that? To life. 
He says, if that was not the case, but if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. It all comes. With, it all works and is tied together, my friends. Jesus Christ came here to the earth. He overcame all things. He died. He was put in the grave. He was resurrected back. You and I, every one of us, came here. We were born here upon the earth. Spiritually, you were dead. Spiritually, you were dead. No life in that body at all. But because He overcame, and because if you put your faith and trust in Him and repent of your sins, you can be made, you can be resurrected spiritually back to life right here, right now, today, if that has not happened there with you. And you can be a part of that true church of Jesus Christ, the spiritual church. If there, but if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain and your faith is vain? Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. And he just went on and on and on, and he's just telling them that if these things have not happened, then... My preaching is vain and all these other things and my belief is vain and yours. He says, for if the dead rise not, then is Christ, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain and you are yet in your sins and you have no hope of eternal life if none of that has happened. But I know that it has happened and I know that you can be relieved of your sins. They can be taken away. And you can be at one. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If all of these things are not true. If Christ was not risen. He says then them that have fallen asleep in him. Those that died in him. Believing in him. He says they're perished. And I know that that's not it. And Paul was wanting these people to understand what it was. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. I want to have hope in him, and I have hope that he will carry me to the end. And I know he will as long as I want to be there. And I know that I can have eternal life with him. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Now he's telling them, and there was people maybe doubting, there was people, there was, there was people in those days that said that there was not any resurrection. There's people today upon the earth that will tell you that all this is just a fairy tale, that nobody can be raised back from the dead. But Jesus Christ was raised back from the dead out of the tomb by God the Father, the power of God. And that's what he's talking about here. That's what Paul was telling them about here. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, but by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Since by man, and we talked about that a lot recently too, came to death there in the Garden of Eden when they disobeyed the commandment of God. And he says that death, that spiritual death came upon them. And as he says, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. We all inherited that death through Adam. But we can all have that life through Jesus Christ. No other way but through Him. Through Jesus Christ, 
we can have that life. And I want to point you to him today. There is no other way. Then, but every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. Now we will be able to be a part of all of that at his coming here upon the earth. Then cometh the end. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, and there will come a day that when Jesus Christ will do that, that he'll put all that aside. I want to turn over, to, let's read a little bit in John here about some of the things that he's talking about. Turn to the 14th chapter of John. Read a little bit here. To encourage us. These are the words of Jesus Christ. His words. And we talk about it. We go over it. But I want you to truly understand it today. Paul was telling them all about what Jesus had done. He had come here to the earth. I have preached to you the gospel. And I know that's what's been done here. Listen to what Jesus had to say to the people in that day. The first verse. 14th chapter of John. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. He was going. He was about to go to the cross. And then he would be going there to his Father so that we could receive that new spirit. He says, I am going. I am going to be put to death. And then I will go back to the right hand of my Father and I will send to you a comforter. That's what He has promised. He died for our sins. He'll take them away. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there you may be also. And whether I go you know and the way you know, now I want us to all understand that today. Is there anybody here today that does not know the way to salvation? If you do not understand the way of salvation, I ask you to please come and get in touch with me and I will, I will walk you through the plan of salvation. But it is nothing more but repent of your sins. Believe in Jesus Christ. Put your full faith and trust in Him. Believe in Him. That what He has promised, He is fully able to accomplish in you. And He will accomplish these things in you. He says, whether I go, you know, and the way you know. We all know that He died and He went back to the right hand of His Father. And He is there today for us. And we know He has said, I am the door, I am the way to salvation, I'm the way to eternal life. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's no other way. Listen to what he said. I am the way. I am the truth and the life. What are we looking for? Do we want life or do we want darkness? Do we want death or do we want eternal life? What are we asking for? What do we truly want today? If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto me, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet thou hast not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me have seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Has his word been preached over and over to us, and we still do not understand his word and know him? Truly know his Father.
through Jesus Christ. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. And that's what Paul was talking about. The grace of God was in him, he was saying. He did the, he, Jesus was just telling them here of how that the works of God was done in him. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Whose works was in Jesus? The works of God. He just said that. I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Paul understood that right on down the line. And I understand today that if there is any good in me, it is not my works. It is the works of God doing those works within me. Verily I say unto you, he that believeth on me the works that I do, shall he do also. And again, think about that. He said, if we truly believe on Him, we say we believe on Him, we hear His Word, and we are willing to walk in His commandments. What does He say? He says, I say unto you that he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. Was Jesus Christ void of sin? He's saying this is his words, that if we believe on him, we will do the works of Jesus, the same works that he did. Why? Because if the Father is the one that gives us that new spirit, the same spirit that Jesus Christ just said, that the Father dwelled in him and the Father does the works, the Father can dwell in you and the works of the Father done in you by the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. Do you believe that? Do you truly believe that that can happen to you? These are the words of Jesus Christ. And greater works than he shall he do because I go to my Father and he's going to his Father and he will be able to give to all of us that new spirit. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. We've read that and talked about it so many times. That ought to be ingrained in our minds. That if you love him, keep his commandments. Now is that saying, yes, I can say, yeah, I love Jesus. And I, he is a God of love. And he, he's just on and on and on. But then go out and live in sin. My life doesn't change. I still have that worldly lust of all the things and the pride of life and the lust of the eye and all of these things are still right within me. I'm not willing to forgive anybody. I get angry about everything and not forgiven. But yeah, I say that. Does that sound like there, that that's part of it? If you love me, keep my commandments. And what does he say? And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he might abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Do you want that dwelling in you? Do you want that Spirit of God to be dwelling within you? And this is what he says. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I will not leave you comfortless. But then he says, Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But you see me, because I live, you shall live also. That little while, and the world seeth him no more. That was when he was about to be put to death. And he was just warning them and telling them those things. Let's turn back to the 15th chapter of Corinthians.
Let's start there at the 23rd verse again. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ that is come. And then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. The last enemy. That death, that spiritual death is what he's talking about. That that will be destroyed by Jesus Christ. And that's the last enemy. But he can destroy that in any one of us and give us that life. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he hath saith, all things are under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him, that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead, if the dead rise not at all? Why are they then baptized for the dead? And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. He dies to sin. And he stays under that subjection of the Spirit. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage is me if the dead rise not? And again, Paul had gone through all of these type things, gone into the arena, and they brought in wild beasts there to try to kill him. Undoubtedly, he was successful in overcoming him, or God was successful in him. But he says, if after the manner of men, if it was just after that and not after the manner of God that I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage is it? He said, if the dead rise not, let us eat and drink, for the morrow we die. Be not deceived, he says. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Evil communications will corrupt a righteous person if we just stay in that type thing. He says there, be not deceived. Awake to righteousness. And sin not. Awake to the things of righteousness. Awake to the commandments of God. Awake to His words. He will be able to talk to you. He will be able to instruct you through the Spirit of how you can walk with Him. And He says there, awake to righteousness. Be alive here. Don't be asleep spiritually, but be awake and hear his word. He says, and sin not. Don't be deceived. Don't be going around with your eyes closed. Don't be going around slumbering and sleeping. For some have not the knowledge of God. I want a full measure of the knowledge of God. And I know I can have it, and I know you can, and I know I've been able to receive that. To give me spiritual wisdom and knowledge. Every day. That is what we need to be begging for. But let's hear what he says. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. Some have not the knowledge of God. And then he went on and he spoke something else to them. I speak this to your shame. And brothers and sisters and friends, if you are here today and you have been constantly coming over the years and you are here today and you don't have the knowledge of God, I speak it to your shame. I'm going to say the same thing of what Paul was saying here. I speak this to your shame. Because his word is here. His words have been read and, and talked about and told how that we can have the knowledge of God in us. 
We've got to ask. We've got to seek it. But he says, he that does this, I will give it to him. If you don't have that, it is your reason. The reason is, is because you have not put yourself in a position to be able to receive it by repenting of your sins, by trusting Jesus Christ. For some, he says, awake to righteousness and sin not. And you know, we might look around and say all kind of things of, well, I don't, I'm not involved in that. I'm not involved in this kind of stuff. But there can be a tub full of little sins all around you that you are not cleaning up and getting away from. Oh, yes, the big things. It's kind of like the, the, the man there that came to Jesus and he told him. He came to him and said, what must I do to be saved? Well, Jesus told him some of the commandments there, the main ones. And he says, I've kept these from my youth up. He turned around and he told him, he says, okay, go and sell all that you have and give to the poor and come and follow me. And the man went away sorrowful. Are we willing to put it all into his hands? Are we willing to get away from all the worldly desires and the worldly lust that will so easily deceive you and set you at distance from Jesus Christ. Are we willing to do that? Are you willing to awake to righteousness and get sin out of your life? He says, awake to it and sin not. For some of you have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame and friends let's don't take that and just let it cast us down if that's the case with you go to Jesus Christ he is there and he is willing and will give you all the knowledge that you need awake to his word he says hear his word and that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bear grain. It may chance of wheat or of some other grain, but God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. And God has given each and every one of us a work to do as it has pleased him, whatever it might be for us. And let's take his word, let's take that seed of the Spirit and let it grow within us. And be strong within us. He's awake to righteousness and sin not. I want to turn over. Let's turn over to Revelations. Let's turn over to the 21st chapter of Revelations. And see some of the things here of, of what he had to say about these things. What was take, going to take place. Turn to the 21st verse, I mean 21st chapter. I want to just read there, just look in here, a few verse, verses right there in the 20th, the, thir the 13th verse. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. Whether it's the works of Satan in you, or whether or not it's the works of Jesus Christ, and God the Father within you. That is what you will be judged by. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And friends, these again, this is the words that was given to John there on the Isle of Patmos by the angel. These are the true words of God. This is the second death. I don't want to have any part of that whatsoever. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. These are words that are, they are the truths. Now do we want to be 
there in that new heaven. Now let's go on and read what, which place do you want to be in. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God, out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them. And be their God. Jesus turning it all over to his Father now. There's a new heaven, a new earth. All things made new. Do you want to be in that lake of fire? Or do you want to be here with the righteous in this new heaven, this new earth? We can make that choice. And I heard a great voice from heaven, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. I believe there he said there that he's making a new earth, a new heaven. There'd be no more tears, no more pain, no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. For the former things are passed away. And I believe he's talking about that the former things being us just as we are here upon the earth today and all the things that are a part of this earth. I think that's what he's talking about. All of those things are passed away. And now he has made it new. And think about it, if, if we still had remembrance of the things of this earth and our friends and our families and we were there with the righteous but they were not there, how could that take away sorrow? How would we not have sorrow in that? I don't believe, I think that all things of this world and of all there will be taken away and we will know him and we will be with him I heard, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and they shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away and he that sat upon the throne said behold I make all things new everything is new now all the old things passed away taken away gone and he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Now do you believe that? There is going to be, each and every one of us, everybody that's in this building today and that hears the word, wherever it might be, you will be in one of these two places. You will either be cast into the lake of fire, or you will either be with the righteous, in that new city, that new heaven, and that new earth, and all things be made new, there will you will be in one of the two. That is a serious thing for us to think about, friends, that you will be there. What will it be with us? What part? We can. We can know him. And we can be a part of those things. And he said, and he said unto me, I'm sorry, I think I skipped a verse. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. I had read that. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Now listen to that. Remember what he told the woman at the well, that if she would drink of the water that he was talking about, she would never thirst again. That's what he's talking about here. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. 
I will give unto him that is a thirst, him that is asking, him that is thirsty for that spiritual water. He says, I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Not the fountain of death, but the water of life. Again, what do we want to drink from? Do we want to drink from the fountain of life? Or do we want to be in cast into the lake of fire? There is, he's warning us and he's given us the opportunity to make a change. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. What's he talking about? He that overcometh. He that overcomes Satan. He that overcomes sin shall inherit all things. How can you overcome sin? Paul's been talking to us about that. Believing in Jesus Christ. Putting our faith in Jesus Christ. Repenting of our sins. We can overcome. And what does he say? He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And friends, I want us to all understand, it is impossible for you and me on our own. We cannot overcome it. But through Jesus Christ, we can overcome all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Is he truly your God today? Or do you have God's many and Lord's many? But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That ought to be getting our attention. I don't want you to think about this. Let's read that again and look here. He says, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable, the fearful and unbelieving, do you not believe that, that the God that we're talking about when you receive that new spirit, that that spirit is powerful enough to overcome sin in your life, to keep you out of sin? Now he goes right on and he says, Now the fearful and unbeliever and the abominables and murderers and whoremongers, he's telling you about people that are living in sin. This is sins that he's talking about that is so prevalent. It was prevalent in those days and it is prevalent throughout the world today. And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, you, do you believe that I can go out here and say that, yep, I've been saved, I've received Jesus Christ, but now I still live in this type word here, but I'm going to be saved? He makes it very plain and clear that if I live in this matter, it doesn't matter how much that I have said that I'm going to do and how much that I say I believe, if I continue to live in the matter of what he's talking about here, I will be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. And anybody else that lives that way will be. We have to be made new. And then he says when you receive that, then let that spirit be what is directing you from that time forward. He says, I will give to those that are athirst of the drink of the tree of life the power to overcome. Do you understand? Do you hear? Do you know that? Be a part of it, my friends. Let's look down here at the uh, last verse or two of this same chapter. He's talking about there, the 24th verse. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor to it. Then the light of Jesus Christ and God the Father, that's what we'll be walking in in that day. And you know something? That's where we'll be walking today is in the light of Jesus Christ and God the Father. We won't be walking in darkness. We won't be walking in sin if we've got that new birth. 
But he just makes it plain. He says, and the nations of them which are saved, which are there now with God the Father and His Son, they are eternally saved. There is no more temptation. There is no more sin. So walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor unto it, and the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations unto it. And there shall in no wise, and I want you to listen carefully, there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Be careful. Listen to what the Scripture is saying. There shall in no wise enter into it, into that wonderful city there that he's talking about. Enter into that, that defileth. And he says that if we've got that spirit within us in this temple, and we bring sin into it, we are defiling the temple of God. Now we've got to get that out. We've got to get it forgiven. We've got to repent of those things. And we can. And we can have it taken away. He is quick to forgive us. He wants us to be saved. He does not want to cast anybody into that lake of fire. He wants every one of us to be saved. And that's why He is so adamant with what he has told us here that we can and we can see victory but he says that nothing that is defiled neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life and we can everyone have our name written there and we can keep it there by the blood of Jesus Christ. We can keep it there. And let's all just put our faith and trust there with Him. And be at one. Ready to see victory. Let's read a few more verses here in this 22nd chapter. And He showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and His servants shall serve Him. And they shall see His face, and His name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the, God, for, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Behold. I come quickly, Jesus Christ's words. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I believe he's talking about the whole book here. Keeping his word, keeping the sayings of Jesus Christ and God the Father. That's what we need to be looking for and being a part of today. Let's turn back there to the 15th chapter 
of Corinthians. Starting at the 35th verse. But some man will say, How are the dead raised up, and of what body do they come? Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quicken, except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not the body that shall be, but bare grain, it may chance of wheat or some other grain. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh. There is one kind of flesh of men, another beast, another fishes, and another birds. There are also celestial bodies, and there are bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The resurrection of the dead. And that will be in all of us. Some will be resurrected to life. Some will be resurrected to eternal hell. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. That's the rice. This body is sown. This body is put in the grave. This body is full of corruption. Has been taken away. And it will be raised in incorruption. It will be raised a spiritual body full of the Spirit. And all things taken away. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. And it is today. We are living, if you do not have the power of God, that grace of God, you are in weakness. But it can be raised spiritually made alive by the power of God. It is raised in power. I want you to think about that. It's raised in the power and the spirit of God. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. And this is that last resurrection. It is, it is sown a natural body. But it will be raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so is, it is written... The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit that which that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. And every one of us here today have had that natural birth, and we are here upon that earth with that. Have you got that spiritual birth? Have you been raised now, and will you be raised at that final day? spiritually the dead are waiting somewhere the righteous at one place and the unrighteous at another they are not mingling together the righteous know they're saved and the unrighteous know that they are lost I believe and they will at that final day they will all be brought back here upon the earth and they will Face that judgment. Those that are resurrected when Jesus Christ comes back to the earth, that is the first resurrection, will have no part in that second resurrection because they will be with Jesus Christ and He will be turning them over to God. That second death will have no power, but then those others will be resurrected back here upon the earth and think that we are now coming to be able to receive our reward. But fire comes down from God and destroys them. Friends, these are the true words of God. What do you want to be? Do you want to accept that? Or do you want to be a part of the true spiritual church of Christ. The first man is of the earth, earthly. The second man is of the Lord from heaven. We all came with that earthly spirit, with that wicked spirit. But we can be made new here and have that new spirit within us. As is the earth, earthly, such are they also that are earthly. And as is the heavenly, such are they that are heavenly. 
and as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And that is so true. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Listen carefully to that. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. If this temple is corrupted with sin, we will not be able to inherit that incorrupted life, that life that there is no corruption in whatsoever. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put, must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption. And this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. Death is swallowed up in victory because we have now put off that corruptible body and now we have put on that body of immortality, that body of no corruption in it. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have been put on immorality, living forever now, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. I am looking forward to that. And I want everyone to be looking forward to that death being swallowed up in the victory of Jesus Christ. And you can have it here now. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, but the strength, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember what Paul was writing about a while ago and all the things that he had accomplished. But he said, it was not me, it was the works of the Spirit of God within me. And now here he's just telling them, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, as much as you know that your labor of letting that Spirit of God work within you will not be in vain, We'll stand there at that judgment. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, abiding in the Word, unmovable. Satan has no power over you. You're using the grace and the power of God. Always abounding abounding in the work, abounding in the grace of God that He's promised to us. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, and whatever we're doing in the Lord will not be in vain. It will be for our good. Lord, our brothers and sisters, if you do not have the knowledge of God, it is because you don't want it. If you truly have a, want that knowledge, He will fill you with it. He will fill you with the power that He's talking about. And you can overcome. Remember, there's two places that every one of us, we're going to be someday, and it may not be long. We will, 
either be lost or we will be eternally saved with Jesus Christ. And we make that choice today. We make that choice. We make the choice whether or not we're going to repent. I heard something recently. I read something that said, doesn't matter how sincere you are and believe in a false doctrine. You're just sincerely, you're just sincerely deceived. Don't let that happen in our life. But be it one, don't let Satan. You may feel like, boy, I am sincere in this. But do you have the knowledge of God? That's what you have to have. To be able to walk with Him. And He has promised I will put it in your mind and I'll put it in your heart. I will take that heart of stone out and give you a new heart. Friends, the promises are there. The power is there. Don't any of us be lost. I encourage you to believe. I encourage you to put it into His hands and let Him direct you. And where you go, what you do, how you dress, what you say, how you pray, all of these things, I encourage you to let Jesus Christ lead you in it. We'll sing number 191. What would you give in exchange? Number 191, and that's follows up pretty close. What would you give in exchange for your soul today?
there is a very powerful message in that song. Brother, far from the Savior today, and if you haven't repented, if you haven't accepted Him, you are afar from Him. He has nothing to do with you. He loves you, but He cannot do anything to save you if you don't trust in Him and repent of your sins. Risking your soul for the things that decay. Risking your soul for the lust of the flesh. But then that very last part. If when you stand at the bar by and by, and you stand, we just read and talked about some of that, you stand in front of Jesus Christ and God the Father at that throne, when you're weighed in the balance on high, when He looks at your works, and He sees that you have come up lacking, you should be sentenced forever to die. Sentenced forever into that lake of fire. That's what that song's telling you. What would you give at that time for one minute of life that you could repent of your sins for? I want you to think about that very strongly. Eternal life or eternal hell awaits each one of us when we leave here. I choose eternal life. I encourage you to choose eternal life. Let us pray. To God the Father, we thank you for the wonderful words of life that you have given to us today that we can all be at one with you and we can all have that eternal life through the blood of Jesus Christ, through the gospel of His. And I know it's available to all that want it. And I beg that you convict their soul. that they are able to see their lost condition, whoever it might be, and convict us all if we are, have sins that need out of our life. And I know that if there is any sin there, it needs out of our life, God. We just beg that you show it to us and show us how we can be redeemed by the blood of Jesus and how we can be forgiven and how we can repent. And how we can encourage others. Lord, just lead God and direct us in everything that you ask for us to do. Be with us in the upcoming days that your will be done in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.